Okay, in this video we will be looking at constraints. The constraint toolbar, it's located right here, has certain constraints that you need to use in your drawing. You have the equal, you have in tangent, these two we're not going to use. We're having vertical constraints, horizontal, perpendicular, parallel, coincident. We also have concentric constraints to fit two circles into one another. And then we have to fix a line or a point, point so it doesn't move. But your main constraints that you're going to use is your dimensions. This makes it easier for your drawing not to jump around when you start to draw. So I'm going to do a couple of drawings and then show you how these constraints work. First of all, I'm going to draw a circle in a circle. And I'm going to dimension the circle here. Let's call this 10. These two circles can be used to put, put in concentric constraints. Clicking on the circumference there, one with your left click and then left click again on the other will do a concentric constraint. Right, so concentric, one and two, and there you have it. Okay, next one. Coincident is to take two points and then connect them together. Let's say we're drawing a rectangle there. And let's go to coincident. You can also use coincident to make these two fit into one another. One and two by clicking the, the points on the lines. I'm going to click on this corner there and there it connects with one another. Okay, so that's coincident. Right, I'm going to go to undo again. Okay, we've handled coincident and we've handled concentric. Let's go look at equal. Clicking on equal, you can see the color is blue there, which means it's selected. So I'll be clicking on one circumference and then the next, where the circles are equal. So if you've got five circles that needs to be dimensioned to the same size, you use the equal sign to be able to make them all the same. You also can draw the circles before the time. Here we've got five circles. Let's go to equal. One, two. Click on that circle again. And then the next. Again on this one. And the next. This one. And then the next. So you can see all of them are the same. So now by dimensioning, if I make this 14, all of them will become 14. Okay, next thing. We will be looking at tangent. I'm going to draw another circle D. As you draw, you can constrain your circles with dimension so it doesn't become larger or smaller. So click, uh, let's say 10. And what I'm going to do is, if there's no dimensions between these distances, the circles will also jump around. So you need to constrain it with dimensions. So if I'm going to, let's say I need to put a tangent there, I'm drawing a line, click, I'm escaping. And pressing enter again uh, to draw another line and I need to draw another line on the inside and escape right now I'm gonna go to center point arc and I need to put the arc on the outside so I'm gonna click here move upwards click again and then draw and click I'm coming here to the bottom click move upwards Click again, move and draw and click. Right, let's click on tangent. Look at tangent. Clicking on this circle in there, you can see that the circle is jumping downwards. 
This is because your drawing is not constrained with dimensions. Same here. Okay. So what you need to do is always when you work with circles, please put down your dimensions. Let's say it's 13. Center to center distance dimensions is very important. Okay. So there's all our dimensions. Uh, we also need a dimension from there to there. And I'm also, let's call it 12. Okay. Let's go in tangent. Click on tangent. Left click on the line. Left click on the circumference. Left click on the line. Circumference. Line. Circumference. Line. Circumference. One. Two. One. Two. Now all of these has tangent at all these circles. So now you can see that this is overlapping. It's overlapping. And we can use the trim function to trim it away. Click on trim and just click on the line and click and click and click and click. One more time, another time, and there we have it. Okay. I'm going to go to tangent again and click on that one and that one and then on this one and that one. But if I zoom in, you can see that there's a bit of a space there. You need a tangent to make sure that your drawing will be able to extrude. So what we do here is go to extend. Click on the line there on the tip and it will close. Extend, click on there, and then it closes. That overlaps, let's trim it. Okay, there's our trim. There's our drawing. Okay, let's trim all of these away. And that's what we are with. Right. So now we have learned one, two, three. We're now going to do parallel. We also learned this one. Parallel. Perpendicular, horizontal, and vertical. I'm going to delete this drawing. Escape, left click, highlight everything, and press delete. Okay. If you click and you draw a line, look at the little box there. It shows you a horizontal constraint. That means that line will stay horizontal no matter what. So you can click. And then it's set. There's the constraint there. You can see the constraint is sitting right there. If you go vertical, you can see the little box. It shows vertical. That's your vertical constraint. Right? But however, that's the perpendicular constraint. So just by drawing, you can have some of these constraints. So escape. So make sure your lines is always straight and perpendicular when you draw square objects. However, if you did make a mistake, you can go and do this. Let's say that's your drawing, and you need to be able to get this line straight. You can go click on horizontal constraint, click the line, vertical constraint, click the line. No problem. Or alternatively, let's undo, click on perpendicular, click the first line, The second line you can see your lines has become perpendicular but you want it to be horizontal you're going to need your horizontal constraint or your vertical and there that's what you have this is how these work parallel lines okay there's a line there escape and enter to get my line function back you can see it's blue there highlighted clicking and draw it diagonally that's a perpendicular, sorry, parallel. Click on one line and then the next, and there you have a parallel line. No problem. Let's take this line and that one to make it parallel. Will it go? No, it won't. This little box will always pop up when you already have constraints in place. In, in other words, 
this can't move anyway because you already have horizontal and vertical constraints there so you cannot go and rotate this whole thing and make it parallel with that point there so it doesn't matter how your lines is lying you can get it perpendicular or horizontal okay let me say horizontal and I want this line to be parallel go to parallel and that's what we have that's all the constraints that you need to know you, this constraint you can lock down lines and points and it will stay there it won't move okay these are just that's for symmetry and that's to get a center point and it is to uh, to break the a line into two collinear constraint Let's get it collinear co Okay, there we are. That's constraints, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, thank you very much.